a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we just wait here a couple minutes and see if anyone shows up. <laughs> there we go. I don't see what you see. Yeah, me neither. I can't even see like the participants. Like how many? If you click. Um, you should be able to click participants and and see who's rolling in. Hi, everyone who's just joined us. Um, we're just gonna wait one more minute before we kick things there off to go. give everyone the chance to log on. Um, so we'll get started in just maybe like thirty seconds or so. Okay, well, I think that everyone has had the chance to log on um, for those that we can expect to join us. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Hannah Campbell. I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admission here at MCPHS, and I primarily work with candidates that are applying to our Doctor of Optometry program. I am also joined here with um, one of our faculty members. who will allow her to introduce herself. I'm Dr. Jennifer D'Amico. I've been uh, a full-time on the faculty for a couple of years. I was an adjunct prior to that, so I've been here for about six years. I teach optics, uh, much to Shelby's dismay, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I teach clinic, which makes up for optics, probably. Uh, and um, and welcome. And we also have a current student joined with us. Hi, my name is Shelby, Shelby Jarrett. I am a second year optometry student. I am originally from Jamaica and then I've lived in Nova Scotia, Canada for um, some time. So I'm from both. Um, I do enjoy your classes, Dr. Jamaica, despite <laughs> what you might think. I do love your classes. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Awesome. So we're all pleased to be here this afternoon to talk about all things School of Optometry with you. Um, I just want to note that this session is being recorded. So if at any point you need to log out before the end, uh, we're going to be sending the recording out to all registrants so you can look back and listen um, at an alternative time. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So just talking about some basic information about MCPHS to start things off. Um, we are a healthcare specific university, kind of hence our name there. Uh, we have over hundred programs in healthcare and health sciences. So that's really our specialty here. Uh, we started as just a pharmacy school back in 1823 and have since grown quite a lot to incorporate, you know, now a full catalog of hundred different programs uh, over that 200 year period. Um, so we just celebrated our 200th year anniversary. We um, are the oldest institution for higher education out of Boston. So um, we've seen quite a lot of growth in that amount of time to now have not just our Boston campus, but our Worcester, Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, and a large online catalog of programs as well. Um, so since we are dedicated to the health sciences, a lot of the students around you are going to be working towards other healthcare professions. So you'll get a good amount of opportunity to collaborate with them through different like school sponsored events um, and activities. And since we have been around for so long, we have a lot of clinical affiliations with some of the leading medical institutions in the nation. So when it does come time to choosing your externship sites, you're going to have no shortage of options. We have sites, you know, as far uh, west as California and even rural Alaska, as far south as Texas and uh, Florida and really everywhere in between. So you'll work with a clinical coordinator um, on those sites and they do take your preferences into consideration. So talking about our locations a little bit more uh, in detail. So like I said, we, we started at, at our Boston campus. It's just a pharmacy program. Um, and that campus is primarily our undergraduate campus these days. So the campus that we're going to be mostly talking about today is our Worcester campus. Um, so this campus is dedicated to professional phase programs only. So that's where our School of Optometry program um, is held. Um, we also have other professional phased clinical programs there as well, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit more further into this presentation. But that is where you can expect to be is Worcester, Massachusetts for your optometry degree. 
We also have kind of a sister campus in Manchester, New Hampshire, that has a lot of the same programs that we have here in Worcester. Again, clinical professional phased programs only um, that was founded in the year 2002. And for those who wish to continue their education once graduating from um, a degree program here, we have a lot of like certificates and master's degrees and um, all sorts of fun stuff through our online base of programs as well. So a lot of different opportunities here uh, at the university. So speaking a little bit more about Worcester, um, this is, that's how you pronounce that word is Worcester. Um, but we have heard everything under the sun. So if you mispronounce it, you know, we're going to be the last people that will be offended. Um, even if you talk to a local around here, they may refer to it as Worcester, trading the ER for an AH as the Boston accent often allows. Um, so I guess you could say that we don't say it right ourselves either. <laughs> So Worcester is only about 45 minutes outside of the city of Boston. So we're still very much so the metropolitan Boston area. And this area is still a place where you're going to find healthcare right at your fingertips. Um, so literally visible from our front steps is St. Vincent's Hospital. Um, some of our other programs will have clinical rotations there. Um, what, what may be more relevant to you guys is that we have uh, UMass Memorial Medical Center just down the street. They're a medical school with an ophthalmology program. Um, and we have a great partnership with them where we refer a lot of our more complex patient cases over to them. And um, also our students have been able to participate in research previously, which we'll uh, touch on later on in the presentation as well. So there's a lot of fun stuff to do in this city. Um, I like to say that we're kind of located in the entertainment hub of the city, being that there's a lot of like uh, concert venues and arenas and um, orchestras and such around that you can partake in uh, while you're a student with us that are within walking distance or really just border our campus per se. So you'll have no shortage of opportunities to go see, um, you know, a, a show or um, even in a hockey game or a baseball game while you're a student with us. But I could go on and on about Worcester, but I have um, a Worcester native herself, Dr. D'Amico here. Um, so I'd love to ask you, you know, what, what do you think are some of the best things that Worcester has to offer for uh, incoming students? Okay, so I kind of have to correct you. Um, I, I'm not a Worcester native. I grew up a town over. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Worcester so County technically native. Technically Worcester. Um, I grew up a town over, and then, of course, unlike Shelby, did not live in three countries. Um, I <laughs> have I grew up this town over. I went to college, I went to grad school, and then I came back here to Worcester. And I've lived in Worcester for the last thirty something years um, as an optometrist. I love Worcester. Like I can't say enough good things about Worcester. I think the diversity uh, really is what makes Worcester the the most fabulous place to live in. We we have. You go to the market and you hear different languages and you and and genuinely not like oh i i went to that remote market way in the corner but it, it just everywhere you go you hear languages all day long and um and it, there's fun things to do there's great places to eat nice fun bars there's you know just, I, just, I i could gush all day what do you think shelby <laughs> I, for me, my number one thing is the food. Like it, it's so diverse. As you said, there's like um, Jamaican food because I'm a Jamaican. So I love the Jamaican food is like right next door. I can just go to um, There's Italian restaurants, there's Indian restaurants. The cuisine is very diverse. So I love that. And a lot of these restaurants are just like a 10 minute walk away from campus. Um, so it's very easy to get to, or you can just order in. But I find that walking sometimes really does help to get to see a lot more of what Worcester has to offer. That would be my main thing. Um, and I do like um, going to the parks here in Worcester as well, like especially in the summertime when it's really starting to get nice and warm. Um, and just like going out and hanging out with friends and even taking the train to Boston for a weekend just to have a different um, scenery for like studying. So I really enjoy um, Worcester in that regard. Thank you guys. Uh, as a Worcester County native, uh, as well as uh, Dr. D'Amico. Um, I personally like how it's a more of a digestible city is what I like to describe it as. It's not as big and overwhelming as like a city like Boston might be. Yeah. There's a lot of rural towns that surround Worcester. So it's easy to get out and feel like you can get into nature. Um, we have a, a ski mountain that's really not too far away from the university, like maybe 20, 25 minutes away. It's Wachusett Mountain. So um, if you're not into winter sports, but want to break into it, that's a great place to start. 
Um, they also have great hiking trails. You can find me there pretty frequently, uh, me and my dog at least. <laughs> so um, with that, we're also smack dab in the middle of Massachusetts. There's a lot of highways that run in and out of the city. So it's super easy to get in and around New England um, from this city. We do have a commuter rail system that runs uh, several times a day between us and Boston. So you don't even need to bring your car to the city. You can just hop on the train, uh, which is a short distance away from our campus um, and enjoy a, a day trip to the city. If you have time, maybe between semesters, you're not going to have a whole lot of time during semesters, <laughs> of course. Um, but that is why we have such great restaurants, because, of course, when you're a student, you got to eat. You might not have all the time in the world for the fun entertainment spots, but at least you can uh, treat yourself to some good food while you're here. So one unique thing that we can offer um, our students here is on-campus housing. So this is kind of a unique feature for mostly a graduate level focused program, um, given that we have five different residential options to offer you. And our options range from like full studios to six bedroom apartments. So we're looking at like more luxurious price points versus more economical price points. So you can really choose an option that suits your interest there. Um, I would say our most convenient option for students is uh, 10 Lincoln Square, which is actually where your program takes place. So um, you can literally just roll out of bed and head to class. You don't even have to step foot outside. Um, it's a hotel style accommodation because it previously, that building was a hotel before MCPHS acquired it in 2000. Um, so it's more of like a hotel style accommodation, um, your own room and bathroom with a shared community kitchen. But we also have full apartments that are like a 10 minute walking distance from where your program takes place as well. So you get a variety of options, but no matter where you choose to live, you're going to have your own room and everything does come furnished and all utilities are included in the cost of the rent. Um, Shelby, you'll have to remind me, do you live on campus yourself? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I live in 10 Lincoln. And honestly, it's it's one of the best decisions I've made about like where, where to live, like housing wise because living in Lincoln just makes everything so much more easy. Like, as you said, you just roll out of bed and go downstairs. It's a two minute elevator ride. Like you can't get it any better than that. Um, I really love that, especially in the winter time when it's snowing or even when it's raining and it's just not a good day outside. Um, so I really love that about living um, in Lincoln. And also it helps when I'm like studying late at night because I am not good at studying in my room. So being able to study at school late at night and not having to worry about, you know, how am I going to get home? Um, so that just puts my mind at ease as well. Um, and as you said, it's like hotel style. So pretty much everything that you need is there. You have your own room, own bathroom, and the kitchen is available 24-7. I really love that as well. And laundry is on um, it's just downstairs in the basement. So it's, it's a breeze, honestly, living in Lincoln. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, has everything you need all in one place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, Shelby. I appreciate it. All right. So next, I wanted to include kind of a snapshot of all the different um, programs that take place here in addition to our optometry program. So we have um, you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician assistant studies, uh, dental hygiene, diagnostic medical sonography, nursing, pharmacy, and acupuncture. That's our community here in Worcester. Um, so with these, some of these programs actually have active on-site clinics that serve members of our community. So not only for optometry are we serving members of our community, but we also see them come in to get services from our PT students and uh, get their teeth cleaned by our dental hygiene students. And some even come and get ac acupuncture services uh, down the street with our acupuncture students. So these are all things that you can partake in as a student with us. Um, so it's going to be often where you might have a dental hygiene student approach you and be like, hey, Shelby, my patient canceled. Yes. I need to clean someone's teeth today. Uh, can that you has happened before. Yes. I've had <laughs> sure dental appointments at school. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's and nice. I don't mind. I get free dental health care. Yeah. 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 You got to take care of yourself while you're here, mm -hmm. um, not yeah. only through your ocular health, but also through um, your oral right, health. Right. Right. Exactly. And a lot of students that come here to um, have never tried acupuncture before. So this is your opportunity to, to give it a shot. So one uh, other unique thing about us being a healthcare specific university is that we could try to bring all these perspectives together at least once a semester to participate in an interprofessional 
education activity. Um, so this is kind of our take on um, improving the current state of the healthcare system for you know, future generations. Um, the current state of the US healthcare system is often described as like fragmented or uncoordinated or disorganized. So our goal is to really graduate professionals that are um, ready to collaborate with each other. Um, you know, the future of healthcare is interdisciplinary. You know, these days when you um, are dealing with a major medical issue, you have a team of professionals from all sorts of different areas that are overseeing your healthcare. So that's what we're trying to instill with our students is just to better understand their role as a collaborative team and understand the role that others can have in the overall spectrum of patient care. So this is something that you'll definitely participate in in your first year. Um, it does become optional throughout your remaining years with us just because you, know, you have a, a pretty uh, stacked clinical um, schedule at that point. So it's uh, on a case-by-case -case basis if you can uh, attend after your first year, but I definitely recommend um, attending as uh, these are some really important lessons that you get to learn uh, through IPE. So uh, Shelby, I'd love to ask you about your experience with IPE, yeah. if you um, have any um, sort of experiences that you might want to share with us. Yeah. Yes, um, I do remember one um, IPE experience where we were talking about opioids and you know, like the, the increase in opioid um, overdose and how we as professionals can help our patients um, in ways that we can like be prepared for if we see a patient that has, um, that is going through an opioid overdose, what to do, like what to look for the signs and the symptoms and um, to always have like Narcan, you know, handy, especially in your office because you never know. Um, and especially to educate our patients about um, how to properly administer Narcan, um, especially for patients that you know know somebody or has like a brother or sister or a friend that they know is addicted to opioids. So it is um, a good thing to have in the back of your mind, to, like know what to do in cases like that. So we worked on um, how to properly administer and what to look for as a team effort and not just as an optometrist, but also as like physical therapist, dental hygienist, because you never know, like we're in healthcare, a lot of stuff do come up. So I thought that was really cool that we get to sit in a group and talk about how we can collectively make the world a better place. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you brought up that one um, in particular. That yeah. was one of my uh, my favorite ones that I've, I've heard about. Yeah. Um, we've also done like a, a dementia simulation in the past where we like simulated some of the symptoms of what it's like to navigate through life uh, with dementia. They've also done, I think more recently was like a diabetes maintenance type training. Uh, but all of these are kind of around the idea that no matter which profession that you're a part of, you're going to encounter patients who have struggled with addiction or who have dementia or who have diabetes. So just kind of understanding your role in the overall spectrum of, of healthcare services and how you can best support your patients um, over, you know, the team of healthcare professionals that are available to them does go a long way um, in supporting them. So thank you for sharing that. So getting into the nitty gritty of it all, uh, we're gonna start talking about some of the details about our Doctor of Optometry program specifically. So we launch a program every year um, in September and it is a four year long program. Um, one unique feature to us too is that we do allow students to have the opportunity to pursue sort of a, a buy one, get one deal for a master of public health, which they'll complete simultaneously with their optometry degree. Um, so the MPH is a really great opportunity to pursue, especially if you're looking to go into like education um, or access and advocacy. Um, and it's not too, too much of a stretch to be able to uh, tack it on to your OD degree. It just adds one additional online course to your curriculum a semester. Um, doesn't start until your second year of the program. So you at least can get that foundation going and, and really assess if this is something that you want to add on with. Um, so with that, it's it's through our MCPHS online programs um, and it's an asynchronous course. So you typically will have maybe till like Sunday at midnight to submit your assignments every week. You don't have to attend any scheduled lectures or anything like that. So they do make it as easy as possible to juggle with your optometry studies. But um, ultimately, if you decide you don't want to pursue the uh, MPH while you're a student in the optometry program, it is available under our alumni scholarship in the future. 
um, along with uh, like five other online degrees, which include like an MBA in healthcare management, uh, master of clinical research, master of clinical management, um, master of health informatics. Those are just to name a few. So those are uh, a 50% off tuition scholarship under our alumni scholarship. Um, so other than that, I'd also like to point out a statistic at the bottom of this slide, uh, just in regard to our residency match rate. So um, we've recently seen a 26% match rate for our optometry students with an optometric residency. So of course you don't necessarily have to do a residency to become an optometrist, but it is a great opportunity, especially if you want to teach or work in a VA or work in a specialty. Um, and I would like to say that this, uh, this really is uh, sort of been built up just due to our extremely comprehensive clinical education that our students experience for all through four years of this program, um, where you have a really unique opportunity to have a very diverse patient population available to us. Um, our patients are, um, you know, from Worcester County being a sanctuary city. So what that means is that the city receives uh, immigrants and refugees that come from all over the world and they help them with housing, um, with finding jobs and ultimately getting linked up with healthcare services. So MCPHS is one that they often uh, will venture to just because we uh, frequently give low cost or free care, not only through our school of optometry, but dental hygiene, physical therapy, and all the others that I named uh, previously. So with that, you're gonna be exposed to a wide variety of ocular disease and pathology while you're a student with us. Um, so this experience is really second to none and really sets you up to be a successful clinician once you do graduate. In addition to that, we really pride ourselves on having some small cohort sizes. Um, this allows us to provide a lot of individualized attention to our students. Typically, our cohorts are around like 64 students, and that's further broken down into 16 students per lab with a couple of faculty members there, too. Um, so they really get to build a good rapport with you. Um, I'm hoping, as you witnessed already between Dr. D'Amico and, and <laughs> Shelby here, um, just at the start. Um, so... I'd love to ask Dr. D'Amico if she can share more about the ways that they're able to support students throughout the program. That is the thing I think that we do the best is that because the class is small uh, and as faculty, we all really care about each other personally. Uh, and then we care about the students as well. And so I think most of the students uh, are very comfortable coming upstairs and, and, and asking us questions or just hanging out or taking some of our candy or, you know, that, cause that's why it's there. Uh, and, and, and I think that that's the thing that makes this program so great. We're here, the doors open, you know, I'm getting ready for my summer class and uh, writing my syllabus. And I'm like, oh, do I have to have regular scheduled office hours? Because like, you can just come up whenever you want. I'm up there or make an appointment, but yet like, you know, it's just, we're, we're here. The door is always open where we are approachable. I think it is, it, I think it really is our biggest asset. Absolutely. I can attest to that. I bother her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love when you come up. <laughs> <laughs> and they just come in like, oh, I just took the worst exam. Come in, complain about the exam and then leave and go upstairs and, and start studying for the next one. You know, like that's, that's one of the reasons that we're here. Onward and upward. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'd love to start kind of breaking things down for uh, our attendees here by telling you about, you know, what exactly you can ex expect to experience through all four years of the program. Um, I'd love to turn it over to Shelby to talk about at least years one and two as she's experienced them herself so far, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. So year one, um, I believe it is the first semester where, um, I had to book myself an eye exam as if like I was a patient, I was the patient. Um, so I get to have like a full experience of what it means to be a patient from like start to finish. And my doctor was actually a student doctor. So um, I get to see like how, what their confidence level was. And I could also ask some questions as well. So it's really nice to see like as a first year, a second year doing your eye exam, it gives you like, um, that hope that in a year's time, this will be me, you know? So I really liked having that opportunity. 
Um, and then I believe it was the second semester um, where I got to shadow um, an eye exam. So another patient came in and I was just like a fly on the wall kind of situation where um, I would just observe to see how everything happened from start to finish. So I really loved that. Um, and that was first year. Second year now, that's when um, we start actually seeing patients on our own. We do have our preceptors like Dr. D'Amico that actually comes in every now and then to um, check up on us to make sure that we're doing everything okay. We're, we're not having any issues. If we have questions, we can always ask. Um, but it's, we really do get that early patient experience from day one. Like as soon as you start second year, you go in, you see patients from start to, full, start to finish. Um, it really sets you up for success. And that's one of the things I really love about MCPHS is that early patient um, encounter. Um, and then besides from being in the clinic, we do go out on school training where we go to um, like elementary school, like kindergarten, where we actually perform school screenings for, for little kids. And I think that's, that's a big deal as well because it's about giving back to the community and seeing how you can help others. And um, we do give free eyeglasses, I believe, to little kids every now and then too. Like yeah, we do. really need it. So yeah, so being a part of that is is really awesome um, to be able to give someone their vision, you know, especially little kids that had no idea, um, you know, that their vision sucks. So being a part of that is really, really life-changing for sure. Did I miss anything? Oh, we also rotate through the um, 10 optical as well. So other than giving a patient a prescription to get glasses, we actually have the experience of helping them choose their favorite pair of glasses and then talking them through, you know, like the entire reflective coding, um, like what, what to expect, what not to expect in progressives and, and just everything that has to do with glasses. We are able to take on that role as well as not just student doctors, but also like an optician side of things. So that was really fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shelby. Um, I'm wondering if Dr. D'Amico can take us the room. Yeah, so the then the third year comes, which for Shelby comes in two weeks, one week, right? two weeks, week and a half. And um, our third years, uh, we have an affiliation with one of the local community health centers uh, that has three locations. One's right here in Worcester. And then one is uh, about uh, 20, but it depends on the traffic, 20, well, with no traffic, 20 minutes east, and the other one is about 20 minutes southeast. Uh, so they have three locations, and we put students at each of those locations, and uh, they are there for the entirety of the day. And they see, depending on what semester it is, they see patients. Um, so so Shelby will start out next week or whatever, a couple of weeks from now, yeah. uh, seeing patients. We start out scheduling them one patient a session and a session's four hours um, because they don't know how to use the computer system there is different than the computer system here. And they don't know where the drugs are and where the, you know, they don't know things. And so concrete things. And so they figure that out the first couple of weeks. And then very quickly we go from one, one patient in four hours to two patients in four hours to three patients in four hours. And then come the, that's like first summer semester, and then first fall semester, and then by spring semester, you're seeing patients every hour, um, which seems at this point in Shelby's career is like, are you kidding me? We see patients every hour. And then the next thing you know, you're seeing patients every hour. And you're like, oh, look at that. Not only are we seeing them every hour, we're done by four o'clock. And so it's it's a nice transition from um, from now you know what you're doing and how and applying it and then becoming more confident in your skills. The advantage to the health centers um, is that it is uh, a low socioeconomic status, which tends to mean that is a sicker population. And so we see a lot of ocular disease at the health centers. And so that's a lot of fun. And then they also, so that's their primary care. And then in third year, they also rotate through contact lens specialty and glaucoma and low vision and pediatrics. It's two separate, uh, you do, I think it's contact lens and and glaucoma are together and peds and low vision are together. I don't I don't remember which ones go together, but you do one right, set right. of you think I'm right? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. I, yes, yes. 
so you end up with with two specialties one semester and the other two specialties the other semester um and we have some really interesting glaucoma patients we have specialty contact lenses that are that are uh, the whole entire community refers to us same with low vision the whole entire community refers to us uh, one of the things that we have at at a great benefit for us is that we have time and so the time, the labor intensive um, aspects of the job, which include specialty contact lenses and low vision, uh, in private practice, it's unrealistic to think that you're gonna spend two and a half hours with one patient. But here we spend four hours with one patient if it needs to be. So, yeah. so it, it allows the patient to get the care that they need without worrying about the time constraint, which is kind of nice as well. Absolutely. I, I do want to... You go ahead. I, I do want to add, um, I like that our preceptors don't push us to know everything right away. It's a gradual progression. So we're not going to know everything day one. They don't expect us to do an eye exam an hour on day one. Um, so I really like how lenient they are with that. Um, I mean, it may take us three hours to get it, but they're not upset that we took that long. They're more about what did you learn? What went right? What did not go right? And for you to do better the next time. So they're very helpful when it comes to that. I just wanted to point that out. And from a patient point of view, when I've um, when I've gotten my eyes checked in our eye and vision center, um, they always like are very accommodating and um, willing to kind of just you know, practice whatever they can practice on you. And they've even been like, do you want to see a picture of the back of your eye? And I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so it's nice to have that opportunity, like versus seeing your your traditional private practice optometrist who's like, all right, let's get you out the door as fast as possible to just build that rapport with the students. I always look forward to my annual eye exam in the EVC, of course. <laughs> all right. So what can we expect in a uh, year four, Dr. D'Amico? Year four, you are, um, well, you can be on campus, but mostly you are not on campus. Year four is three semesters, so summer, fall, and spring. And we have externship rotations, as Hannah was saying in the beginning, that are everywhere. We have them in, in Florida, we have them in Texas, we have them in California, we have them in Minnesota, we have them in Alaska, we have them in Worcester, we have them right here in-house, we have them everywhere. Providence, we have a lot of um, externships which are within a couple of hundred miles from here, which um, makes it a little bit easier if you wanna stay in the same place. Um, but, uh, and some people come with uh, families and, and spouses and children and some people, students, and some students uh, are free to roam the country. And so, and some do and some don't. And, and every type of experience, we have VAs, we have private practice, we have community health centers, we have Indian, uh, reservations. We have all sorts of, we have Air Force Base. We have all sorts of different types of um, externship rotations that are out there uh, that are located, like I said, in all different places. Some people choose for the travel. We have contact lens specialties. We have glaucoma specialties. Um, some people choose for the travel. Some people choose for the educational experience. Everybody is unique, but you're doing that your entire fourth year. We have um, a couple of projects that you have to do along the way, but we if you choose three rotations that are not here in-house and not even close, like if you go to Florida and Arizona and Alaska, uh, we, we say goodbye to you this week and we don't see you again until graduation. It's a long time. It's, oh, yeah. it's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just thinking about uh, our third year is that they're going to be leaving soon. That's so sad. They are. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be you next year, Shelby. I know. It's right around the corner. It goes, <laughs> like by it goes so fast, too. You'd it be surprised really how fast does. this year goes by. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So I know that you guys can't be here in person, at least not today, uh, but we want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what you can expect here in terms of our facilities. So um, who better to ask, but Dr. D'Amico, can you talk us through uh, what, what we can see here at Lincoln Square and what we have available um, in terms of amenities for our optometry program? Yeah. So we have in the clinic, we have in, in the actual clinic, um, we have all sorts of, uh, we have Foropters that are manual and we have electronic foropters. We have all the latest technology. We have a new OCT-A, not that new anymore. It's probably like four or five years old. 
But uh, so not only is it a regular OCT, it also does angiography, which is super fun. We have a brand new camera, which is super fun, right? That thing takes great pictures. Um, we have different types of visual fields so that you learn on the different, um, that th there are there are philosophies behind the types of visual fields that are out there. So you get to learn on all of them. We have a laser clinic. So we are um, doing laser procedures downstairs. We have uh, anterior seg OCTs for, the, for uh, the contact lens clinic. Low vision, one of the reasons that everybody refers to us in low vision is because our low vision inventory is unbelievable. We have all sorts of, all sorts of crazy, supplements to your vision that you can actually walk out the door with. So we have gigantic, you know, closed caption TVs. We have little handheld magnifiers. It, it, it's likely that the patient is, is walking out the door with the stuff that they need. So in the clinic, we have, we have everything that is really state of the art in the preclinic, which is where you learn how to practice, where you pra learn how to, where you practice learning, where you, how am I doing? Uh, you, you practice <laughs> becoming a doctor. To the preclinic, we affectionately say sometimes some of our equipment goes to the preclinic and that's where it gets to like gets put out to pasture. Um, but the preclinic has we have two preclinic rooms that have 16 rooms each and they have um, each one has whatever it needs for whatever it is that you're learning at the time. So there's a foropter, there's a slit lamp there, um, but we take the foropters out first semester of first year because we need them. We want we want to we want to maybe um, clean them or we want to do something to those raptors. We take them out because you're not using them that first semester anyway. But the minute you start using them, they go back on the on the stands, and we're back doing that. Everybody gets their own. You're not you know every their their the lab sizes are appropriate for the room. So there's not a lot of hanging around and waiting for somebody else to finish. So now you can get a turn. All of the um, microscopes have either uh, little iPhones attached to them or cameras attached to them so that we can see, and that's true in the clinic as well, so that we can see what it is that you're seeing in real time so that we, instead of sort of saying, hey, did you did you see that black thing? And, and the student saying, yeah, yeah, I, I think I saw it. Um, we know exactly, we can take a picture of it and point to it and put your head back in there and look and make sure you can see it. Uh, and so we have, we have great, up to date, you know, even though I said that go to die thing, um, we, we have great up to date equipment. We also have two visual, uh, virtual reality, um, BIO, uh, units that, um, you can go in and practice, uh, when you BIO is when you wear the headset on your head and you're looking in the back of their eye. And so we have two units. You can go in there and practice whenever you want and, um, and practice BIO, from my perspective, the nice thing about the virtual reality is I can literally see everything you're seeing. I can show you what you're seeing and what you're missing, as opposed to me trying to push you around in, in, in the clinic in front of a patient in the virtual reality room. Um, I, we can, I can say whatever I want and we can, uh, you, you can see things as well. And then we also have um, obviously part of the um, you're becoming an optometrist, there's national boards and we have a specific national board room where it has every single piece of equipment exactly the same as the national boards that you would take the, the clinical skills part of the national board that you take in um, North Carolina. And so we have a, an exact replica of that. I was in there this morning um, working with one of our students to, to his, his, he's got his board exam on the 28th so we were down there, I was down there with him for four hours trying to make sure that he knew what he was doing, made sure that he was confident in what he was doing because he does know what he's doing. Um, and that's that's our clinic. We also have 10 Optical, which is a whole, um, an optical store. We sell glasses. Um, we don't, currently we don't cut lenses downstairs, but we are hopeful that that's gonna happen. Um, and, but everything gets sent out. That is run by a, optician, a licensed optician, and um, and you, as Shelby said before, you will rotate through there as well. Thank you so much. So um, another, you know, feature of our program that you can take advantage of is uh, some research opportunities. Um, this is something that's optional if you're interested in getting involved in research. We do have uh, faculty that are still working um, 
on various research projects. I believe it's a, a requirement for, to some extent to participate in research for faculty members. Is that that right, Dr. D'Amico? It's a it is a it is a requirement. Um, it, it research ranges uh, because there's research, there's patient care research, and then there's um, uh, Dr. Shivana does research on retinal cells. So that's a whole separate, um, you know, a, a whole separate type of research than clinical care research and doing studies within the clinic. Um, but yeah, we, we it's all out there. And Dr. Shivana takes students also to, that's some of the research that's been going on at UMass. Dr. Shivana takes students there uh, and uh, to do, if you're interested, you can do research with him. We have all sorts of, all sorts of studies going on that a lot of times I don't even know it's happening, you know. I heard one uh, interesting one with a prism lens for low vision patients. Yep, there's oh, that, there, and it's actually, that one's actually pretty neat. And Shelby, have you done that with Dr. Deliso? That that no, but I I know Miriam is doing a re research project with Dr. Deliso. I just don't know exactly what it is. Oh, I don't know she's doing with her. I know she's doing oh, one. Okay. With, she did one with Dr. Shivana with the um, oh, LP. Okay. Um, but the low vision one is kind of interesting because there's this simulated. Um, it's like a simulated mall. So you're standing there and you're watching these people in the mall, and you can imagine if you if you can't see well, um, and then and then at a mall particularly people are just coming from every direction as opposed to if you're walking down the street usually it's just two directions yours and the opposite way but at a mall maybe somebody's crossing all the way across the way and you don't see them coming in your vision because you don't have the you don't have a full field of view and so the study is trying to figure out how we can adjust things so that perhaps you can navigate walking through a mall better and you sit there with your you know you as a as a and we we were down there um, testing it out, and so they simulate the fact that you would have no field because we they, we were we were doing it on each other, not on patients. And it's actually really interesting. It's going to be an interesting study that's just about to get underway. Awesome. Well, needless to say, you know we have a faculty member that we can pair you with if you're interested in any sort of area of uh, of research in particular. Um, so there is definitely a variety of ways that you can get involved there. All right, so now that we've kind of wrapped up um, all the major facets of what you can expect from our program, hopefully you, uh, you'll want to submit an application soon. So I want to go over some of those details on how you can do so. So all of our applications do come through OptumCast, which is a centralized application system that really uh, takes all of your transcripts and makes sure that you're checking all the boxes that you need in order to have a full and complete application to send to the schools that you're applying to. Um, so some of the things that you'll need to keep in mind is that we um, we do prefer a bachelor's degree, although um, candidates who have most of their prerequisites completed with 90 plus uh, college credits can apply, um, although the bachelor's degree is preferred. Um, you do need to send in all college transcripts to OptumCast. So even if you've done like one random summer course at a community college, we do need that transcript. So you wanna just make sure you're submitting everything so that your, your application doesn't get held up at all. Um, what we do ask for is a 3.0 GPA. Um, in addition to that, you are going to need to submit a GRE or OAT score. So those are the standardized tests that we do accept. Um, we will not be able to review your application until we have either test score on file. So typically when we're looking at the GRE, we like to see scores that are in the 50th percentile. So that's like um, usually like the 150 range and above. Um, and then for the OAT, we like to see the 300 range, um, particularly for the academic average in total science scores. Um, we also prefer to see some candidates that have some sort of experience in the field of optometry, whether you're shadowing or whether you're working as a tech, um, that's all great experience. It's not necessarily required, but I always say that I think that this helps most, especially if you um, if you earn an interview for the program to better talk to your passions for uh, the career and your experiences and such. Um, also tying in like what you've observed within the career itself. So you are welcome to apply to the program if you have courses outstanding. Just note that we do need to have all prerequisite courses completed by August 15th with a grade of a C or higher before you start the program. 
Um, and you can complete those courses at any regionally accredited institution. So that includes community colleges. We also accept online coursework through accredited institutions. We do offer all of our prerequisite courses through our School of Professional Studies, which is an online um, school through MCPHS to external students. So you can register even today for a course and you'll probably be ready to go to start moving through the modules by Friday. Um, and they are self-paced, so you just get to go through the modules at your own pace. You're given 16 weeks, but you can complete those courses. Um, we've even seen people complete the courses in as little as a month. So uh, as quickly you wanna, as you want to move through, you can. Um, if you are a student who has taken international coursework outside of study abroad, say like you've completed an international degree, we do need a WES, a World Education Services Evaluation. So this um, eval essentially just translates your international credits and degree into like a US equivalency. So that way we can review it for transfer credit and get a better understanding of how um, your degree compares to what we offer here in the US. Um, and just note that we do require one letter of recommendation, although two or three are preferred. Um, a common question I get is, you know, what, what type of letter of recommendation should I be providing? Um, and we suggest providing one that's like academic in nature, and maybe one that's um, more professional in nature. So academic would be like a science professor or an academic advisor. Um, professional would be, you know, someone that's maybe been your manager or um, an optometrist that you've shadowed or, you know, someone that you've worked with that can speak to your work ethic. And finally, we do interview by invitation only. So if you meet the admissions criteria, the final step is to interview. Um, we offer both virtual and in-person interviews. So if there's anything that I can stress, it's to apply early. Um, we do have rolling admissions, so spots are filled on a first come first serve basis and they are limited. Um, our application deadline is just around the corner for the fall of 2024. Uh, extend our deadline to May 23rd. So there's still a couple of weeks to squeak in a, uh, an, an application if you still wish to deconsider this cycle. Uh, but time's a ticking, so you're going to want to make sure you get that completed as soon as possible. Um, for those who are looking to apply for fall of 2025, our application will open at the end of July. Um, and I kind of touched on this uh, previously, but we do look for GPAs that are above a 3.0. Um, we're going to look at your cumulative GPA. So that's all the courses that you've taken throughout your entire college history. Um, one thing to note um, is that OptumCast does not exclude repeated courses. So if you did repeat a course, it is going to be um, calculated with the cumulative GPA. So just keep that in mind. Um, sometimes people think that their GPA is slightly higher than it actually is from what they see in OptumCast. So if, you're, if your school participates in GPA forgiveness, your, your GPA might be a little bit lower um, if you did take retake courses, um, you know, given the calculation through OptumCast. MCPHS will calculate your prerequisite GPA. So we take the highest grade earned in an equivalent prerequisite course and match it to our requirements to get our prerequisite GPA. Uh, we also like to see that you have an interest and motivation um, and passion for the program that you're applying to, and you have ample opportunity to explain yourself in the, the supplemental questions in the essay itself. So please do put a lot of uh, thought and effort um, into those because we do read them. Um, and lastly, of course, the timing of the application is everything because, um, like I said, spots are limited. You don't want to miss out. So let's talk about um, the financial commitment to optometry school. So um, all domestic students are of course eligible to apply to the FAFSA. Uh, there are grad plus student loans that are typically available for students who um, do apply for FAFSA. That is our, our school code listed there. It's the same for all MCPHS campuses. So if you um, you know, do apply to the FAFSA at a later date, you can just Google it. And um, even if it says MCPHS Boston, just know it's the same for Worcester as well. And if you are an international student, um, we do have a Canadian admission counselor, Krista Levac, who predominantly works with our Canadian population. So if you do hail from Canada, she's an excellent research uh, resource when it comes to funding your education, um, different bake loans and such. So I do encourage you to connect with her. Um, I should have uh, 
um, clarify this earlier too, when I said we do need an international transcript evaluation for international transcripts, that does not include Canada. We do not need an evaluation for Canadian applicants. But all other countries we do. Um, important to note as well, we do have merit scholarships available to all students upon acceptance into the program. So um, anyone who's admitted you will get some amount of scholarship. Uh, for domestic students, we're awarding currently up to $12,000 a year. And for um, international students, um, it's typically $15,000 a year. Just given the exchange rate, we try to throw you a bone a little bit. Um, but of course, we understand that going to grad school is a huge commitment and we're here to help you out. So we're very open to having uh, financial need conversations so that we can help you bridge the gap. So don't hesitate to reach out if that is the case for you. Um, one other thing to note, we do have affordability appointments that are available through our student financial services team. So if you want to discuss um, your own financial um, situation, they can help you plan for what you can expect in terms of your graduate education, give you a breakdown of what the program is slated to cost on like a year-to-year -year or semester-to-semester -semester basis. So with that, I encourage you to um, connect with me if you want to, you know, take advantage of speaking with our student financial services team or have any other questions about um, applying to the program. Um, have a couple of points that I want to touch on on this slide before we move into the Q&A session of our info session tonight. So if there are any last questions that are on your mind, I do encourage you to submit them through the Q&A function on your screen. Um, we'll try to stay until at least like maybe five o'clock to answer a couple questions if you have any. So now's a great time to submit any questions for either myself, uh, Dr. D'Amico, or even Shelby. Uh, we're happy to help. But I do want to point out, you know, if you aren't too far away from campus, we'd love to show you around. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste these links and such in the chat. So if you want to schedule a campus tour, we have a link available for you to our tour calendar. So that way you can take a look and hopefully sign up for a date that works well for you. Um, but we do have a virtual tour that's available for the time being as well, if you wanna click around and get an idea of what you can expect. Um, I wouldn't say it's super comprehensive for the School of Optometry. It's more of just a general campus tour, but we do have some YouTube videos on our YouTube channels there that have some great content about our optometry program. Um, there was even a video filmed back in 2020 that's like a really good comprehensive tour of all things optometry from Dr. Stam. So uh, I encourage you to take a look at that if you're looking to get some more content from us. Uh, but while we wait for some questions to roll in, I guess I'll, uh, I'll pose some uh, softball questions to our group here. <laughs> um, Shelby, I'm curious if you could kind of tell our attendees you know, what a typical day in the life looks like for an optometry student? What can they expect? Well, a typical day. They can expect to do a lot of studying. That's number one for sure. <laughs> um, classes usually start at 8 a.m. Um, let's say about like three to four days out of the week, it starts at 8 a.m. You usually have one day that's a little bit later at like nine, nine or 10, depending on the semester. It changes from semester to semester. Um, and then lunchtime is usually at 12, so 12 to 1. And then at the afternoon session is about like 1 to 3 or sometimes 1 to 5, again, depending on the day. But you do get a 10-minute break between each hour, like in between classes, so you're not always sitting down. Like you're not sitting down for four hours straight. Um, you do get a break. Um, but then outside of like usual classes, you are expected to practice your skills that you learn in lab a lot. So you're going to be in lab a lot more than your scheduled two-hour lab per week, for sure. So I would say it's going to look really hectic. It's going to be really intense the first year, at least, um, being in class and then practicing your skills outside of class. But it's definitely fun and rewarding. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Great. Um, another question I personally get asked a lot, um, especially from our students that are preparing to come to this program is, what can I do in the meantime? How is the best way to prepare for optometry school? Um, now, this, this question is open to either of you. Um, so whoever wants to answer, you're totally welcome to. So I would say you 
need to honestly look at yourself and see what kind of learner you are, what kind of um, studier you are. This this is stuff that you, what we teach you is stuff that you will take with you from from semester to semester. So it's not like you learn something and then you get to forget about it. And then next semester you get something new. Um, it, it, you know, like when you're in college, you take chemistry and then chemistry is over. So I, I finished that now, now I got biology. Okay. So now that's over and I finished that this stuff first year, you feel like that's what's happening. And then second year, it all starts to come together. And so you, you want need, you want to learn your own study habits that are going to get you to a place where you can learn things, put them together, be curious about what's going to come next. Um, that the the more the more prepared you are to put in a lot of effort, uh, the 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 less the 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 the, the better first semester goes. Well, yeah. I've heard that from a couple of faculty members too. It's definitely advantageous. Oh, go ahead, Shelby. Yeah. Um, I do want to add that um, for me, like transitioning from undergrad to now a um, doctorate program, the way how I studied in undergrad was not the same when I got to grad school. And I had to learn that very quickly. And um, I do want to say that you have to be patient with yourself and learning the new ways that work for you. Um, and so originally I was never a person that like did study groups a lot. But now I do see the benefit of study groups, like group study with your friends, or even going to talk to um, your professors more than just relying on self-study, um, because it is an intense program. And the more you act, the more you'll know, the more you talk things out, the more it will solidify a lot more. So that was one of the things that I had to learn from early on transitioning from undergrad to um, grad school. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, we haven't gotten any questions in from our attendees, so I'll just pose one more before we uh, close this session. Um, now, Shelby, I know you've kind of, um, you know, come to the U.S. from Canada for your optometry education here. So I just wanted to ask you, you know, what what was it that brought you to MCPHS specifically? Um, well, in Canada, for sure, there was only one optometry school there, let's just say that. So I know I had to look elsewhere. Um, but the thing that drew me to MCPHS was, um, number one, the small class size. I really like the fact that you can get hands-on um, and be close-knit with your um, your classmates as well as faculty. That's one of the really things that I enjoy most about MCPHS. You never feel like you're alone. There's always somebody there and people will recognize that you're there. They'll, they'll know when you're not there. So they'll ask for you. So you never feel like you're all in this alone. Um, and another thing was the early patient experience, because a lot of schools don't give you that until like your third year. Um, and so having that early patient experience, like I'm only my second year and I've seen 14 patients already and not a lot of optometry students can say that. So I really think that's one of the the um, the things that I love most about MCPHS. So that's that's why I chose here. So those, those things are really important. <laughs> wonder when you're going to st stop counting all the patients that you've seen. <laughs> oh, they never oh, stop. <laughs> but I will say. When I get to 100, that's when I'll probably stop. <laughs> you say that, but so so part of uh, grading them comes by accident with a patient number. And so here's Shelby walking into her first semester summer with 14 patients. She will, one year from now, um, my students who who are who would have walked in with the same 14 patients or 16 or or 13 right um one year from now i think the biggest number that i saw was 180 and the smallest number was like 145 or something like that so you will see a ton of patients in the next year and that doesn't include like you you start getting lazy right like if you if you if you <laughs> if you're the doctor then you're going to Medishrek that patient. But if you're if you're just typing for your friend because somebody was a no show, you won't even put that in, you know, once you hit like right, you know, 75, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I don't need that anymore. And so that's without any of those patients that they end up in that like 150, 175 range. Awesome. It is it is very awesome. exciting. Awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. very exciting. 
it's fun for us too. It's fun for us to watch you guys. You know, it, every year <laughs> we got to start all over again. Um, but it's fun to it's fun to watch you guys grow. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that kind of brings us to the end of our presentation here. So hopefully, you guys learned a lot. Um, again, uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions along the way, whether you're looking to apply now or in the future. Um, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to also meet with you and discuss, you know, as you apply and plan uh, for what's ahead. So I do offer counselor appointments as well. Um, so take that with you. Um, hopefully we'll see you on tour sometime soon. And maybe we'll see you here as a student in the future. So thank you all for uh, listening in and thank you to Dr. D'Amico and Shelby for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us. Um, although Shelby's on break, so I'm sure she's like, eh, that's <laughs> nothing for me tonight. <laughs> but uh, I hope that you all have a good day. day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.